Welcome to Lecture Online, and now we're going to try to find a more general equation for the probability of some sort of outcome or some sort of event for flipping a coin or anything that, that has to do with a binary situation. Hot, cold, one, two, zero, one, he heads, tails, anything like that. All right, so let's say that we're going to flip n coins, so n is a general number of coins, could be two, three, four, five, six coins. And let's say that k represents the number of heads in the outcome. So n, uh, k is, of course, always going to be somewhere between 0 and the total number of n. If you have four coins, the maximum number that k can be would be 4, and the minimum number would be 0. Of course, all of them would be tails. And the sample space, the number of outcomes in the sample space, space is simply going to be 2 to the n powers in case if n is 4, 2 to the fourth power is 16, that means there's going to be 16 outcomes in the sample space. And the probability of any sort of event happening, let's say k heads and n minus k tails, where k can be any number from 0 to n, the outcome, the probability is going to be this symbolism, n over k, whatever that means, and we'll show you in just a moment what that means, divided by 2 to the n power. Remember, 2 to the n power is the total number of outcomes from the sample space, and that's going to be a number in the denominator. The question is, what is this in the numerator? Well, the definition of n over k, so n, k, in parentheses like that, this represents the number of outcomes for that particular event. Remember, this is some sort of event where we get k heads and n minus k tails, and so this number, whatever that ends up being, is simply going to be the number of outcomes for this particular event, and therefore the probability is going to be the number of outcomes of this event divided by the total outcomes in the sample space. With some numbers, I'll show you an example in just a moment. But first we need to define this. This is defined as n factorial divided by the quantity, oh, not the quantity, I'm getting ahead of myself again. I do that all too often. So n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. Now, for those who forgot what factorial means, let me just show you. Uh, let's say that we have something like uh, 6 factorial. Well, that is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. If you have 4 factorial, that's equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 and so forth. It's simply the integers multiplied together all the way up to the number that you have after that exclamation mark. That exclamation mark means factorial. All right, so now that we know that, oh, let me just put it up on the side here so we remember that. So let's say 5 factorial is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. That would be equal to 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24 times 5 is 120. And a lot of calculators already have the factorial button on there. If not, simply multiply the numbers together. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 is 120. That means 5 factorial. So we say that as 5 factorial. And yes, we need factorials in order to solve the probability when we flip the coin. So, how do we then write that? Well, here's an example. So there's our definition of that symbol. So now let's do an example. Let's say we have four coins. So this means four coins. Up oh, there, I already wrote that down. I don't have to write it again. And let's say that the event, we want to find the probability event where we have one head and three tails. How do we do that in general? Well, here we have the probability. So the probability that we have one head and three tails is equal to, now, in this case, notice that n is equal to 4 and k is equal to 1. Four, four coins and k equals 1 represent the number of heads. All right, so it's going to be this symbol, n, k, that's the number of outcomes for this particular event, divided by 2 to the fourth power, because we know that n is 4, four coins, for the total number of outcomes in the sample space. All right. So this is going to be n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k quantity factorial divided by 16. Remember, with four coins, there's 16 total possible outcomes. Let's now plug in the numbers and see what we get. So n was 4, so we get 4 factorial divided by k. k was going to be 1 factorial times, that would be 4 minus 1 quantity factorial. 
and the whole thing, I think I put my equal sign in the wrong place, equals, and then divide, of course, by 16, which is the total number of outcomes, 2 to the fourth power. All right, to simplify that, this can be written as 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 divided by simply 1, because 1 factorial is simply 1, and then 4 minus 1 would be 3 factorial, which is 1 times 2 times 3, and the whole thing divided by 16. Now, the easy thing to do when we have factorials like that, one factorial divided by another factorial, notice you have 1, 2, 3 in the numerator, 1, 2, 3 in the denominator, and it's all multiplied, which means that they cancel each other out. Of course, you don't have to cancel out the ones, but just to illustrate it, which means you simply are left with 4 divided by 1 divided by 16, or simply 4 divided by 16, which is equal to 1 over 4. And so there it is. That's the probability. If you flip four coins and you want the event where you have one head and three tails, the probability is that there's one out of four that that will occur when you flip four coins. Now, we haven't talked about the order of the heads and tails yet, but that's something else that will come later. Simply here, we're looking for the event where we have one head, three tails, and we don't care what order they're in. And so that would be the probability, one out of four. And that's how we do that.